Joining me now for more on this and uh, one other particular issue that's close to his heart, Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Thanks very much for your time uh, there from uh, Bundaberg, of course. The UK election, what have you made of the result? Oh, well, firstly, it's a big congratulations to Prime Minister-elect Boris Johnson. Uh, but secondly, Jeremy Corbyn is clearly the Bill Shorten of British politics. Uh, he's created the same result that we saw here in Australia. Uh, and once again, we see a Labor Party in the UK, just like here in Australia, that doesn't represent working people anymore. And they've walked away from them in droves. The situation with Boris Johnson is still not an easy one. Brexit is not going to be easy and could be messy as well. It's not necessarily going to be good in the short term for the economy, for Australia as well. Should we be careful about celebrating it too much? Well, I think on Brexit, Tom, what it demonstrates is that if you give people the opportunity, uh, they will always be patriotic and vote for independence rather than be party, part of that big conglomerate. I think that's been backed up by the election result. Uh, I would be hopeful that we are first in the queue for a post-Brexit uh, trade deal. Uh, obviously, we can't hold any formal negotiations until that process is finished. Uh, but we've worked very closely with the UK over a long, part, a long period of time. We're part of the Commonwealth. I think there'll be very large advantages for Australian exporters, and I look forward to seeing them implemented in the near future. Are you happy with Australia's membership of all the various uh, international organisations, agreements as well? Well, that's a fairly broad-ranging question, Tom. Do I support every single agreement that's in place up, and the ones that may well, be well, coming? I was just picking up, no, I was just picking up what you said there about sort of the chance to vote for sovereignty or otherwise. Uh, was it a nod to anything Australia is a party to at all? IPCC maybe? Uh, membership of any other group? Uh, no, it's just a comment around uh, the Brexit process. I mean, that there was a vote. Uh, it, it was won by the people who supported Brexit. And I think if you put people, uh, put a proposition to someone about their own country, well, they'll support it first and foremost. That's been backed up by the election result. I, I think Boris Johnson, as the Prime Minister-elect, has a very clear mandate to deliver what he said he would. Uh, and I think, you know, it'll be an interesting time uh, in terms of world politics, but, you know, we are always part of that game and I look forward to being associated. All right, let's move on to nuclear energy. So there's this parliamentary committee report. Uh, you were a, a part of this, a sort of... Um add-on member. Uh, the report says let's get this considered as an option essentially, look into technology options in Australia. So it's not a green light. Would you, would you call this an amber light to nuclear energy? Uh, well firstly I was a supplementary member of the committee. Uh, I'm not the chair. I don't speak on behalf of the committee. Uh, but in terms of some comments around the publicly available report, uh, what's very clearly been recommended is that we consider uh, lifting the moratorium for particular types of nuclear energy, uh, not, not first of type, uh, obviously things that are tried and tested, uh, but not for those that were you know, designed and built in the 50s and 60s, but modern technology uh, which could make a difference for Australia. I think if we are going to be technology agnostic, we need to look at every opportunity, uh, cost it out and see what the benefit is for our people, uh, but this is not something that would change without the support of the Australian people, uh, but it is a step in the mm. process. Now, that last part you say is obviously crucial. The report indeed is called, or the headline of it, not without your approval. Is there a specific approval needed from voters? Well, there are three main recommendations with a number of subparts. Uh, no one in their right mind would try to put forward something which the Australian people don't support. Uh, but to do that, well, firstly, we need to ensure that they are well informed. Uh, secondly, we'll need to find some sort of mechanism uh, to look to see what their views are. Now, whether that is down the track for an election or some other means, uh, or, or some other associated means, well, that's yet to be determined. But the Minister and the Executive Government will provide a response to the report within the mandated time frame, uh, which I think w will be uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, but once again, mm. uh, as we've travelled the country, there's been such broad-ranging views, Tom. There, there really has. Uh, obviously, there's some with some idealistic positions, and I, I accept that that's the case. But I think we've seen further support yeah. uh, over the recent years simply because this is uh, a zero carbon emissions type technology. So, again, though, going to that sort of voter approval, um, would it need a specific vote of some sort? I mean, I'm thinking to the same sex marriage um, plebiscite or postal vote, whatever you want to call it, because if any given general election, there are lots of issues in play. If you win a general election by a couple of seats, it would be hard to say Australia now definitively supports nuclear energy. So do you need a specific vote? Is that important? 
Well, I think we need to look at the fundamentals first. Uh, and the fundamentals are nothing can happen. There's a moratorium in place. That is the government's policy. Uh, to change that would require mm. a vote, a successful vote in the House of Reps and the Senate. Uh, you would then need changes at a state level uh, and local government approval. Uh, so all of those things would have to come into consideration. Uh, but obviously if it was taken to an election, it would be you know, a, a very prime focus for the, for the community and for the Australian people. Uh, we're not at that stage yet. Uh, this is very early stages. Uh, I guess that the, no, the hub that. of the report is that, yeah, the technology has changed. Uh, it, it is yeah. a lot safer, in, in my view, than it was previously. And, and I think we just need to consider it with an open mind. We wanted to have a conversation with so, the Australian so, people and that conversation okay. continues. So if you, you were indicating there perhaps it might be enough just to take it to an election, and I accept what you're saying, it would be a, a pretty big issue at an election. It wouldn't be, you know, something uh, off-Broadway. But if that were the case, would you need to take the specific issue to the election, that is nuclear power, what type of technology, and also, crucially, where a nuclear power plant might be? Well, well as you've outlined, there's a lot of moving parts to this discussion. Uh, and I think we just need to be upfront with the Australian people. We need to provide the information they need to make a decision. Uh, they'll, they'll let us know very quickly, Tom, if this progresses over a period of time, what their view is. Uh, members of Parliament uh, very rapidly get a handle on what happens in their own electorates, if they're in the House of Reps, uh, of course. Uh, but once again, uh, this is a discussion with the Australian people, which mm. has been running for some time. Uh, I think things have changed and have moved on. We need to be able to consider all types of technology into the future. Uh, and once again, if you right. want a zero emissions generation in this country, th this is the only game in town which is reliable I, I understand and that, and I know as well you've been saying that the requirement for some of the newer generation stuff means it doesn't necessarily have to be near the coast and as a result near major population centres. All of that considered, would you still need to, if you want to consider the Australian people approving a plan for this, tell them what you're doing and where you're doing it, what location a plant would be? Oh, well, I think the recommendations in, in the committee's report says basically that you, you would need to consult extensively with the local community that would be directly affected. Uh, you'd need to make an assessment on what the Australian people think overall. Uh, but first and foremost, you'd need to identify technology which is suitable, uh, which is affordable, which is reliable, uh, and for which we have uh, support locally in terms of running and operating those types of facilities. Mm. Uh, that all takes time. I don't think this is anything that will happen in the near term. Do you accept you're starting behind on this particular topic when it comes to broad support from the Australian people? Oh, well, if you look at the, uh, the results from recent polling from the Minerals Council, uh, what they've said is there's been a significant increase in terms of support. From memory, it was just under 50%, uh, depending, obviously, on what questions are asked. Uh, I think if there was a campaign, an information campaign, uh, which is one that doesn't get hijacked by those looking to run scare campaigns. And Anthony Albanese was in my backyard in Harvey Bay doing that again just today, or Meribah anyway, which is pretty close to my electorate. Uh, it's not unusual, but they will obviously go out, run a scare campaign uh, again. Uh, we want to have a clear-eyed view, uh, a discussion and a conversation with the Australian people, and I don't think that's unreasonable. Right, but the polling that you plucked out, one particular bit of polling that says near 50, it, do you think overall, particularly when the, and this has been polling as well, suggesting when people are asked, will they ever be comfortable living near one, will that support plummet? So that remains the issue. So in that regard, are you, is it, are you still starting behind the eight ball? Well, if you look at the process that was undertaken for the low level waste facility in South Australia, uh, that's required extensive consultation with the local community. Uh, they've accepted that uh, in recent weeks and that facility will go ahead. Uh, once again, the South Australian Royal Commission uh, into Nuclear Energy recommended that the moratorium be lifted as well. So I, I think there is strong support out there, uh, but you don't know until you ask the question. Does the PM support it? Oh, well, that's not something I've asked him, Tom. Uh, th this is a standing committee in the House of Representatives uh, that's had an mm. extensive inquiry. Uh, it's made a number of recommendations but he didn't, he didn't which last the executive government asked, will respond though, to in normal course. Oh, well, I, I don't recall. It's certainly not a question I've asked. OK. All right. Well, that's an interesting point. Maybe we'll ask him next time we see him out there and talking to the media. Keith Pitt, I suspect, will be talking about this again. We appreciate your time on a Friday evening out in Bundaberg. Enjoy your weekend. Great to be with you. Great to be with your viewers.